Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we are going to do probability. Now before you start the section, you need to make sure that you are completely okay with all your grade 10 probability. What we're going to discuss today is a tree diagram. Now when we did probability before, we always did the probability of one event. Like if you threw a dice, then the chances of getting one would be one over six. So you had probability as the formula of your favorable outcomes over your total outcomes. Now what we had did all this time was always worked with one event. You threw the dice. You maybe took out a ball from the bag. But now what happens when we start getting more than one event? Now what does that mean? That means something like if I throw the dice and after I throw a dice, maybe I need to toss a coin. We are having more than one event and the probability is based on more than one event. Then the final result is based on the probability of A times the probability of B. So the probability of the first thing happening times the probability of the second thing happening. We're still using the probability formula. But once we get the answer, we're multiplying it with the second event and that will be our final probability. So let's do a following example. When we're doing these, they become very um, difficult to just see by head. So let's first draw a picture and see if you can understand. Right. What they would call this is called a tree diagram. You have a bag that contains three blue sweets and four red sweets. Now you must watch how I am saying the question. You take out a sweet and once you take out a sweet you then replace it back. So we're not eating the sweet. We're just playing a game. You take out the sweet, you put it back. You take out the sweet, you put it back. Then they'd ask you what is the probability of maybe getting a red and a red sweet? Now look at how it's going to go. You are going to choose, okay? All in all, we have how many sweets? Seven sweets. Our starting point is seven. Now you're going to choose either a blue sweet or you're going to choose a red sweet. For blue, the chances are you'll get three over seven. That is our blue sweet. Why am I saying three over seven? Because there are only three blue sweets and the total number we have is seven. How did I get 7? 3 plus the 4 red. If I got a red sweet, then the chances of me getting a red sweet is 4 over 7. So look, favorable over total. Favorable over total. So I'm still using your probability formula that you had learnt in grade 10. Now, I'm saying a bear contains 3 blue sweets and 4 red sweets. Right? I take out a sweet and I replace it. Then I am repeating the event. Now, why am I repeating the event? I want to know what is the probability of maybe taking out a red and red. Or maybe a blue and blue. Or maybe a blue and a red. Okay, and a blue and red in any order. Or maybe a blue and red only in this order. So when I say a blue and red in any order, it means also a red and blue maybe. Okay, so... Our first event has been done. Now, after your first event, we put back all the sweets and we start again. Now again, we're going to have 3 over 7 because there's 3 chances of getting a blue. And then we're going to have 4 over 7 because there is 4 chances of getting a red. And for this red, again, we're going to split it. Remember, it's like starting all over again. So we have 3 over 7 for the blue. And we have 4 over 7 for the red. Now what is this solution? This one is a BB. Which means it's a blue and a blue. What do you mean or what do I mean when I say the solution? Look, I'm going blue and then I'm going blue again. So what was it? It was the probability of 3 over 7. And then look how I'm getting the final probability. It is the P of A times the P of B. So I'm taking... 3 over 7, which was the first probability of the blue. And then I'm taking 
times and I'm going to say 3 over 7 again. So the final probability of this one is 9 over 49. So when you are doing double events, then the probability of 1 times the probability of the second event will give you the final probability. Okay, now let's look at the second one. Let's say I want BR. BR is 3 over 7 times 4 over 7. So we've got 12 over 49. Here we've got RB and that probability is 4 over 7 times 3 over 7 which is giving me 12 over 49. Then we've got RR which is equal to 4 over 7 times 4 over 7 which is equal to 16 over 49. Now, when I tell you what is the probability of a red and a red, then it's simple. You can tell me, listen, it's 16 over 49. If I tell you what's the probability of getting a blue and a blue, then it's 9 over 49. Now, remember, when I'm saying and, it's not as you had learned it in grade 10, where it was two events overlapping. This whole thing is one probability. Blue and blue is one probability. But now look at what happens. What if I say, what is the probability of getting a blue and then a blue and a red sweet? Now look, I'm not telling you a blue sweet first, then a red sweet. I'm just saying a blue and a red sweet. Any order. Look at how many options we got. A blue and a red is at this level and a blue and a red is at the second level. So the probability for blue red was 12 over 49 and 12 over 49. Now, when I am asking for an or event, so look, I'm asking for the probability of a blue and a red or a red and a blue because I wanted either one. It didn't matter to me. Then my answer would be 12 over 49 plus 12 over 49. So remember when we said or, or when you had done it in grade 10, I had told you or means take every option possible and that's exactly what we're doing for blue and red or red and blue every possible option would have been 12 over 49 plus 12 over 49 which is 24 over 49 so we basically all means we are taking all the options okay now we need the tree diagram to understand more about the probability for grade 11 so you must understand how did I get 3 over 7 and 3 over 7? Now remember I told you, pay attention to my question. Let's do another example. You have 3 blue sweets and you have 4 red, but you are not replacing it as you are taking it out. So now you must think. I am starting with 7. I've got my blue and I've got my red. My blue I'm starting with 7, remember? My blue, I've got 3 over 7 and I've got 4 over 7. But now, I take out a blue. Now, if I take out a blue, when it splits, I no more have 3 blues. I had 3 blues. I took out one. So, what happens now? Now, I've only got 2 out of. Now, look at what happens here. If you remembered, you took out one. So you no more have seven sweets in your bag. You only have six sweets in your bag. So if you took out a blue sweet, you only have two blue sweets left. But in total, you also only have six. Then, if I was going after my blue, my red, I only took out one blue. I still have four red. But... I only have six sweets. Do you understand? So when you are not replacing, the denominators change. But you must be careful on which numerators change. It will be dependent on what you took out. If you took out a red sweet, then how many blue sweets do I have? So I had seven. From the seven, three were blue. 
I took out a red sweet, which means I didn't fiddle with the blue. But in my packet, I only have six because I've taken out one red. And then let's do the red. You had four red. You took out one, which means I only got three red now. And I only have six in the packet. So can you see now how the probability had changed slightly? Why? Because I did not replace them. When you take out and put it back, then you replaced. And when you replaced it, then the denominators didn't change. Can you see at all times I had seven. More attention to the second level, I had seven. Okay. Also, the, the numerator, the top, it also didn't change. I had exactly the same stock I had when I started. But when you are not replacing, number one, the denominator changes. It decreases by one, but also the numerator will change depending on what you took out. Now let's look at the probability. For BB, I'm going to have 3 over 7 times 2 over 6, giving me 6 over 42. Then for blue, so look at how I'm working, blue and then red. So I'm taking my probability of the blue, which is 3 over 7, times the probability of the red, which is 4 over 6, which gives me 12 over 42. Then red and blue. So we've got red was 4 over 7 and blue was 3 over 6, which is 12 over 42. Then we've got red and then we've got red and then red again. So it was 4 over 7 and then it was 3 over 6, which gives me 12 over 42. So the probability of a BB is 6 over 42. The probability of a BR is 12 over 42. So first a blue, then a red. The probability of a red and then a blue is 12 over 42. And the probability of a red and a red is 12 over 42. So can you see how the events changed? When we are doing these events, there is a special word for it. You get independent events and you got dependent events. Okay, but before we discuss that, you need to understand how we got the probability of these events. So you must understand the tree diagram before we go further. Now let's say I asked you, what is the probability of? What is the probability of BB or BR? Now as soon as I say BB or, you remembered from grade 10 work. When I said or, I said take everything. So BB is 6 over 42 plus RR is 12 over 42. So the probability of BB or RR is going to be 18 over 42. Thank you for watching.